Welcome. We should start the webinar. I am Priyanka, representative of Tantra Minds. A very warm welcome to everyone on on our webinar. We are excited to be able to bring this informative and engaging discussion today. We know your time is valuable, so we want to make the most of it. Thanks for shelling out time from your busy schedules and be the part of this webinar. Today we are presenting automate. Account payable invoicing process with Tantra Minds invoice management platform. We will quickly run through our panelists, products and services offered by Tantra Minds, challenges in the process. We'll, we'll talk about traditional account payable process, how our platform would be the solution to these and demo to give you the glimpse of our portal and we'll conclude the session by answering your queries. Just a little housekeeping before we start. Please feel free to post your queries and concerns in the chat box. We will definitely address them during question and answer session. It gives me immense pleasure to get an opportunity to introduce speakers of the day. Mr. Amit Patel, Director Tantra Minds. He is a passionate IT professional with over 18 years of experience in SAP. He is currently leading a team of experts to build innovative products which are designed to help customers leverage the existing IT landscape. Mr. Nitin Deshmukh, he is leading product development team of Tantra Minds. He is the key person in terms of product development, execution and solution architect. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over As I mentioned, these are our agenda of today's webinar. Traditional AP process, we will talk about the challenges, solution we can offer to these, our product demo, and question and answer at the end. So now it's time. So that, uh, yeah, now without further ado, we will turn the time over to Mr. Amit Patil to give our audience insight of Tantra Minds. Over to you, Amit. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka, for the introduction and uh, a warm welcome to all our participants today. I hope you will find this session useful. Um, without further ado, uh, I will kick off this session. Um, as mentioned in the agenda, we will first touch upon the challenges that AP accounts payable finance team generally face. Um, and then uh, what are we proposing to overcome these challenges? And we'll also explain you how, and we will uh, surely be opening up the forum for uh, taking question answers and uh, try to answer all your questions as much as possible. Um, please feel free to, uh, as Priyanka suggested, please feel free to drop your questions while uh, we are going through the, the presentation and we'll, we'll address them towards the end of the session. Uh, right, so just quickly, uh, uh, introduction uh, our, about ourselves. So who we are? We we are uh, a technology and a business consulting company. Uh, we are part of a wider group called Amazon. They are uh, Amazon is into more for SAP consulting, SAP business process and implementation consulting, and we are a technology shoot or product arm of the Amazon. Um, we have uh, strong uh, expertise in technology as well as business processes. And then using this combination, we have sort of uh, generated a lot of products, uh, which we understand complements your SAP applications or any ERP that you may be running um, and help add value to those uh, existing investment that you would have at the same time, address specific business cases and um, certain um, value additions in, in various different line of businesses. Uh, I, will, I will not spend much time on this one. I uh, will definitely share uh, our our deck with you, uh, but just to kind of give us certain highlights, we we are a global company. We have operations in uh, North America, uh, UK, and India. We have uh, customers across uh, multiple components. We are um, a partner with Azure, AWS, and SAP, uh, and we work very closely with uh, this uh, hyperscaler cloud providers. Um, and, and provide various uh, industry solutions. 
that's quickly about us. Um, if we move on to the next one, please, Priyanka. Right. So based on our uh, sort of, as I said earlier, based on our uh, business business understanding, business process understanding, our our consulting experience for more than twelve years in industry across multiple industry verticals, and our technology knowledge, we have uh, brought to the marketplace various exciting products. Um, to help uh, address various business uh, challenges uh, at, at, a, at the same time being very cost effective. Uh, so providing our customers uh, cost effective solutions to address their business challenges and help improvise their business, their business processes and, and make, make overall operations more effective. So today's our focus, uh, focus would be uh, on invoice management. We're going to talk about how we can uh, improvise our accounts payable uh, function within finance. Um, what are the current challenges in accounts payable? Um, how they can be addressed using our product for invoice management. Uh, but we will have uh, our subsequent webinars on our other products. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, we will we have uh, our our Tantra Mind ERP, which is focused for SME sector. Um, we have something called as uh, CS Collab, which we call as customer collaboration and supplier collaboration. So um, for we consider business partners are a key um, element or stakeholders of your business operations. So you as a uh, company would have multiple customers and put a potential suppliers. And to be able to serve your customers better, we need to have the, the better coordination and collaboration across the boundaries of your own organization and therefore our collaboration portal such as customer uh, collaboration portal which enables complete order to cash process with the customer providing whether the customer or dealer giving the customer self-service option um, is is uh, is what is delivered through supplier portal then we have a supplier portal, which is essentially the procure to pay process. So giving suppliers a complete end-to-end uh, -end collaboration opportunity across the uh, purchase to pay process, which whether it is receiving of a purchase orders or being able to submit the shipping notification uh, or invoices, et cetera. So we'll, we'll have a deep dive into those products later. Um, we also have a procurement suite, um, which offers e-catalog, inventory management, uh, invoice management is part of that. It also has sourcing auctions, all these functions, which uh, bolts on to any leading ERP, such as SAP ECC or S4 HANA as well. Um, and then we also have a specific focus inventory of warehouse management solutions and also analytics dashboards for CXOs, which is pre-built uh, according to the industry functions. Uh, it's essentially a plug and play systems uh, on top of S4 HANA or ECC or any other ERP that you may have. So these are our current product suite. Um, I'll not spend too much time in the, talking about other products, but let's jump right into the today's agenda and today's focus, which is invoice management. Right. So uh, getting into the grips of it, I understand our participants today. Uh, there are there is a mix of participants today. Um, some some from finance, some from non-finance background. So just spending a, a few minutes on what is current accounts payable process generally, uh, traditional accounts payable process. And, and we also touch upon what challenges uh, we, we can generally uh, come across in, in our accounts payable process. So if, if you see this complete end-to-end -end process has specifically three phases uh, into it. The first phase is how we receive invoices, so various different channels through which we receive invoices from suppliers. The second phase is once you receive the invoice, what do we do with it? We extract the invoice data or we key in the invoice data into our ERP systems, the finance systems. Then we try to validate those data, that invoice information against if it is a purchase order based invoice, we try to match it with the purchase order price. We try to match it with the received goods quantities or service performed. Uh, and then we, we try to sort of uh, arrange uh, uh, we try to then post this invoice into uh, into the SAP system or ERP system that you may have. So, if you look at the the receive, receiving of the invoices, which is which is step one, and what are the challenges in there? The second is uh, data entry into the system, and then validating those invoices for interdepartmental queries. For example, if we 
Um, if we have a purchase order not match, purchase order price is not matching with the invoice that they received, we need to probably get on the accounts payable team. Probably needs to get on the call with um, with the final purchasing team and get the purchase order pricing updated. Then uh, spend a lot of time between interdepartmental queries, uh, whether it's the purchase order price or missing good receipts and things like that. So uh, traditionally, we have a lot of uh, interdepartmental uh, lot of interactions uh, in order to process invoices. And of course, uh, posting of those invoices into the finance for further payment. What we have observed uh, traditionally is typically your uh, invoice receipt, whether it's the email or, or the invoices through post, although these days the invoices through post are quite minimal. Um, the receipting of the invoices and processing it into the or data entering the data of those invoices into an ERP system generally takes on average four to five days. And the major pain point after that starts, which is interdepartmental coordination uh, and trying to address the queries. And then of course, uh, resolving those queries and posting the invoices, which essentially ends up, uh, you know, posting the invoice in finance uh, module by the time uh, the invoice is already due for payment, uh, which, which causes a lot of um, issues in terms of not only we end up spending too much of a cost processing a sing single invoice if you look at uh, you know data entry cost or uh, the time that our teams are spending in coordinating with each other and of course uh, the relationship with the supplier uh, ultimately takes a toll because uh, the delayed in payments or uh, you know it's just uh, delayed in uh, invoice uh, information and things like that um so those are a typical scenarios in in the current world. Uh, if we if we kind of move on to the next one, please. So, just just to list down some challenges. Then uh, now we we have seen the 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 traditional process. What what are typical challenges? I mean, if we do a bit of a deep dive into the challenges, I think the biggest one is the cost. Um, I have come across certain customers who who operate you know 10 to 15 plants across in India and each plant has an invoice processing clerk uh, so we probably end up having 15 clerks uh, to manage invoices across each plant I mean that's probably an extreme end of of a, of a spectrum um the processes are still manual and therefore time consuming um the the, the key issues with accounts payable is where where the payment is uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, leaving the organization, I think it's always very sensitive to frauds. So uh, suppliers, when they can be cheeky and try to uh, submit invoices with the duplicates and things like that, there are scenarios like that. So how do we protect uh, ourselves from certain frauds? Um, and of course, we, when it invoices comes without a pure reference, they could be, you know, non pre approved invoices. Uh, how do we, how do we apply our governance on those invoices? Uh, how do we ensure that every invoice that we are paying has gone through um, a proper uh, approval cycle for the right people who are supposed to approve the right approval levels um, and ensure the internal audit is, is on our side from, from the accounts payable perspective. Then uh, ability to, uh, to track how we are doing in finance in accounts payable uh, how is our performance? How many invoices we are processing? At what speed? What accuracy? Um, that's another uh, area where we don't generally get that information uh, on our fingertips. Um, then, of course, all this kind of leads into the suppliers keep calling, asking for the status of the invoice, when the payment will be received, and sort of ending up uh, half the time uh, on, on the phone for some of our team members uh, answering supplier queries. Um, of course, this all ends up into the, the, the invoice processing time taking more or longer uh, than what it should be. I have some interesting numbers to share with you uh, on the next slide. I'll, I'll just uh, speak to you about that in a minute. And of course, we end up missing the opportunities to you know, process the invoice faster, making the payment faster and potentially get a uh, discount for offering the discounts uh, for, for getting the the payment uh, done earlier than than what it's already based on the payment terms. 
Um, so all this sort of are, are you know, uh, are critical issues. Um, this is all missed opportunities. These are all hitting the bottom line of our organization and, and areas where we can improvise. So if we go on to the next slide, please. Right. So just to give you a bit of a glimpse about um, uh, the invoice management, typical invoice management uh, uh, in, in, in a service business, for example, we, we end up seeing, uh, this is just some interesting numbers. We always see invoices with pre-approved or PO-based invoices could be 30% versus um, sorry, uh, pre approved invoices with the purchase, purchase order funds could be 70%, but there's still a significant chunk uh, of invoices that we receive without any pure reference, um, which are money or, or the services already bought or uh, goods already bought uh, and, and consumed, but PO was not received and we are receiving invoices after the event. Um, and how do we handle with those invoices? So that's another sort of a challenge that we have for uh, a from governance perspective. And if you go to the next one, please. Yeah. Um, sorry, this one more slide. If you can skip, I'll come back to this one later. Uh, next one, please. Next one. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I wanted to kind of spend some time. Um, that what is the industry benchmark in accounts payable? And and what are the best of breed companies are, are doing and, and why it is important. So this KPI metric, so obviously we measure what matters uh, and, and those KPIs in accounts payable work stream uh, is, is quite important. So typically, uh, what is the industry benchmark for processing a single invoice? And the survey comes back saying that it could take to average 17 days as the industry pink perch, but how are the the top performing companies are doing against them and it's quite interesting the top performing companies are going up to 3.7 days to process invoice uh, what is the typical cost in dollars for invoicing uh, a single invoice and this cost just does not include the person processing the invoice uh, this cost includes the the systems used or money that we spend on systems um, the time that we spend, um, not just the data entry, but also following up the invoice, etc. Um, so typically, industry survey has come across this single invoice can take up to uh, $10. Um, however, the better performing um, companies could be six times lesser than that. Um, the number of invoices processed by uh, a single AP uh, clerk, as we call them, could be three to five thousand in a industry benchmark, but it could be increased up to eight to twenty thousand with the use of uh, better tools, productivity tools. Um, exception rate for top performance is ten point seven, as against twenty two point six percent. And PO to non PO uh, percentage that invoices that we receive to against the PO uh, for the top performing companies is seventy five percent. Still, if you see top performing companies are still receiving invoices 25% uh, uh, without a PO reference. So this interesting fact, and the reason why we are looking at this KPI is, is how do we transform our accounts payable function and bring our company into the top performing companies or closer to the top performing companies. Um, again, this, this top performing companies can also further be challenged with, with the with the um, revolution that is happening in the technology world with introduction of generative AI technologies such as ChatGPT in, in the consumer world, even the enterprise uh, technologies uh, also kind of are getting revolutionized. Uh, and, and there are a lot of opportunities to even further improvise this, uh, this performance. So the question is, how do we uh, improve this? And that's where our solution, Tantramind Invoice Management uh, solution has come to the, to the table. Uh, and if we can go now to previous like this, one step back, one step back, please. Thank you. So just wanted to show uh, an overview of what, what invoice management tool that we have brought to the table uh, sort of provide out of box. So the first and foremost is streamlining the business processes. So as I said, invoice processing is a three-phase process. 
uh, first is data extra extraction, then uh, validating the business rules on the data, and then finally uh, posting it into an ERP system. So those three phases are quite important. And if we kind of further slice and dice it, then it has variations. I.e., what do you do with the PO based invoices? Uh, what do you do with the service? Uh, sorry, what do you do with the non PO invoices? Within the PO based invoices, what do you do with the material PO invoices? Then service PO invoices, because all this has a certain different flavors in your ERP. For materials, we post a good receipt. For services, we post service entry sheets. So, how do we, you know, orchestrate our process, streamline our process, uh, just just to get, um, you know, everything sort of uh, neatly streamlined? Um, then exception handling. How do we uh, how do we get scalability? For example. We always have accounts payable. We have 80 20 percent rule. We have 80 percent invoices coming from 20 percent strategic suppliers, uh, generally speaking. And then we have a long tail of suppliers who provide over 20 percent of volume. So, how do we address? Uh, how do we start small? How do we then bring our large suppliers and high volume invoices back on uh, the, this platform where it can be further streamlined? How do we ensure that we optimize our cost, uh, not, not have to have uh, one person per plant, for example, to, to process invoices? How do we ensure, how do we give suppliers a self-service? You know, how do we ensure that they could see their own invoices potentially if we want to give them? How do they can reconcile their own invoices? How do we can see um, what, what has been posted in at our side, what not, if, if we choose to do so? And, and essentially, how do we ensure uh, how do we comply with our internal audits or internal requirement? How do we get unapproved spend under control, et cetera, et cetera. So all these challenges, the solution is Tantra Mind Invoice Management. Um, and if we go into the further detail, um, what is the, uh, we'll, we'll look into now. So this is basically a nutshell, uh, a high level story, what, what uh, can be improvised in accounts payable. Now let's look at what how it works. Uh, so if you go to the, the uh, slide up of this and, yeah so let's look at how does it do it um and this is like the previous slide was the traditional way this is the one which uh in nutshell we try to simplify this our our solution into a simple five five six steps solution so what what happens so if you look at step one we receive invoices through different channels we receive through post uh, very rarely now these days um, and then once we receive it, paper invoice, we have to get it scanned uh, in order to further extend or, or do the manual data entry potentially. Uh, then we do get invoices through emails uh, as PDF invoices or JPGs or things like that. Um, and do we do have certain suppliers, certain companies have given vendor portals or supply collaboration portals to, to their suppliers to collaborate with and that's the route that generally suppliers could also submit their invoices by, we call it, call it as PO flipping process. So they prefer to the PO, flip it and submit the invoice or potentially they can flip the shipping notification and create the invoice. Um, these are all different channels, of course. Uh, then we also have certain challenges within that the PDFs could be, uh, or JPGs could be uh, generated from their ERP system, suppliers ERP system, but they could also be a handwritten invoices potentially. Um, so there are n number of different uh, scenarios there, but typically, you know, the, the the strategic suppliers, I would say, the the suppliers which forms potentially eighty percent of your volume of invoices, generally would fall into this category. Um, then getting this in uh, data extracted, so that's where sort of our our product comes in picture. That whatever channel that we are receiving the data, whether it's being received through uh, email. Uh, or self-service portals, or uh, is being scanned. Our our product has a invoice extraction capability, which uh, essentially the, um, the the extraction is not needed for the last channel self-service service, self -service portal. But if you receive the invoice through a PDF in email, our product has an extraction bot where it will access your email automatically, identify the, P, uh, the PO invoice or non-PO invoice automatically and extract the data from that PDF and create a draft invoice document as if in a traditional world, uh, accounts payable uh, accountant or clerk could do this by entering the data by seeing the PDF invoice uh, manually. So that's where our first AI tool comes in picture where 
uh, it knows what the invoice is in the email box. It knows uh, what whether it's an invoice, PO invoice or non-PO invoice, and it extracts the information um, and and present to the user um, uh, in in a such a way that they can see the PDF, the original PDF, and the extracted uh, data on side by side. Um, the next step is again is very much value adding step. So the first step was just the data entry. It's more of a mechanical step getting the data into the system. But the more important and uh, uh, value adding adding uh, step is actual validating the invoices for various different checks. Um, so we have almost twenty three different checks across PO and non PO invoices that are built in. For example, you have extracted the data of an invoice and invoice is already posted similar with a similar number from a similar vendor. So system is uh, smart enough, intelligent enough to identify this is a duplicate check. And this information is, this validation is done with the reference to the, uh, with, with comparing the incoming invoice data with the existing ERP data that we already have. And then it runs through these different checks. So we have such 23 checks out of box Plus, we would have um, you uh, your your own configuration. If you have any specific requirement that our accounting clerks, for for example, checks X Y Z, um, and that we need to make sure that the system does it automatically. So we could configure additional checks for you as well if needed. But long story short, basically the incoming data goes through sequentially goes through various different validations. For example, whether it's a duplicate invoice. Whether the vendor that we have the invoice coming from the uh, the particular vendor is this our valid vendor, then whether it is a purchase order number, whether purchase order exists in in SAP, uh, whether the purchase order then has line items and line item price matching with the invoice line item, identifying the invoice line item which matches the PO line item, all there is there is a lot to talk about, uh, and I'm sure uh, my colleague Nitin will uh, touch upon these points when he will go through go us through the take us through the demo. But the part is, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, the, the application does intelligent uh, data validations. And then it essentially tries to do the two-way or three-way matching, depending on whether it's a PO, uh, you know, go to sit best purchase order, or it's a three-way match uh, purchase order. Um, it also then has non-PO scenarios. If, if a purchase order is without a non-purchase uh, order reference, um, Sorry, invoice is coming without a purchase order reference, then it's intelligent to identify this supplier is not a purchase order supplier. So it then takes it through the, the coding and, and the, the uh, SLA approvals and those kind of things. So uh, it follows a different process for non-PO invoices. And up after that, we have a workflow platform. So for example, all this validation comes in with exceptions, for example, so price is not matching. It needs to go through a certain purchasing team uh, member. It will automatically send an approval uh, workflow to the right person, depending on the information available on the purchase order, for example. And the purchase the purchasing person would be able to see this invoice, would be able to take a corrective action. And that corrective action would then be able to, uh, uh, the corrective action can then uh, update the, uh, the purchase order uh, and back uh, into the invoice management application and in invoice can get updated automatically. So, uh, and then up ultimately it can be posted further into uh, ERP system. So that in nutshell is, is the process uh, that our product uh, sort of enables. It, uh, it also is underpinned by a very interesting dashboard. So our dashboard, uh, we provide the, the management team and the accounts payable manager various different uh, dashboard the kpis that we just mentioned in the previous slide they our uh, product will bring this dashboard to life so the manager of accounts payable team could uh, monitor on day daily basis weekly basis monthly basis how we are performing against this um uh, uh the the invoice uh, management kpis that we have just spoken about so that's a, a typical process now i think we could uh, quickly go to next slide please uh, Right, so I'm going to hand over to my colleague uh, as a next step for taking you uh, through the real demo, live demo. Um, but before that, we will run through a quick poll. And if you could, uh, I request you to, uh, you know, provide your responses to this poll. And we will simply uh, quickly then go into the, the live demo and show you how this process is enabled in the system. 
Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Hello, everyone. You. So I, I would like to request to please, uh, please answer this poll. Mm. Uh, are you interested in one to one demo of our invoice management solution? Please make your choices. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. Over to you, uh, Nitin, for the demo. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before uh, start the demo, I would like to explain. Uh, how we are receiving the invoices from the vendors. So uh, as Amit, uh, Amit explained, we are receiving the invoices through the multiple channels. We are receiving the invoices through the emails. We are receiving the hard copies of that uh, invoices. Then we scan those copies and send those copies to uh, our uh, dedicated email ID. Then we are uh, then supplier uploading their invoices through the self service portal uh, or vendor portal. So these are the mediums uh, which is vendor used to send their invoices. But for the demo, I'm using the email. So right now I'm sending uh, my, as a supplier, I'm sending one invoice to the account payable team of Tantramites. So for that, I have an email ID of account payable teams of Tantramite. I'm selecting this email ID. Just I'm uh, adding the attachment of the invoices. So this is my invoice. I'm adding this my invoice, uh, attach this invoice, and I have just sent this invoice. So as a supplier, uh, I have sent one invoice uh, to the account payable team of uh, uh, Tantra Mind. And right now, uh, as an account payable clerk, I'm logging to the system and see the uh, what invoice we received uh, by the vendors. So for that, I'm logging to the system as an account payable clerk. So before I explain all the process uh, of the invoices, I would like to explain you the all tiles which is uh, available uh, on our system. So here you can see fail to captures. So uh, as Amit explained uh, in that process, uh, invoice extraction. So uh, when we are receiving the invoices from the suppliers, our application will find out or extract the data, mandatory informations from the invoice. The mandatory information could be uh, the vendor code, vendor name, uh, then invoice date. So these are the mandatory information which is required for the validations. So if applications fail to valid, uh, fail to extract those informations due to certain reasons, if the PDF quality is not good, vendor have sent the image uh, image of that invoice and image is blur. And if our application failed to capture this information from the invoice, then that invoice will automatically will go into the fail to capture scenario. And second tile, you could see the failed business rule uh, uh, validations. So after the successful ex extractions, uh, what our system will do, system will run some validation stick. So right now, all the mandatory information extracted from the invoice, like PO number, line item information. So all these mandatory information extracted. So first validations would be uh, the duplication check. So our system check, uh, the same invoice number is available on the system for the, uh, the same vendor. So this duplication check uh, will do by our uh, application. So that uh, process is automate. System automatically check that uh, duplications. And if uh, uh, the duplication is a duplicate invoice available in, uh, if uh, system find out the duplication, then our system automatically trigger a email notifications uh, to the vendors and tell them these are the duplicate invoice. Okay. Then we have all types. So in all time, we could see all, uh, invoices like posted invoices, fail to capture invoices, fail to business rule invoices. And fourth tiles, we have the posted invoice. So once our application validate all the information and success, then uh, our application automatically push the data uh, to the SAP or any backend ERP system and post or park the invoices. 
So these posted and parked invoice will be shown in that posted invoices type. So uh, just uh, I have sent one invoice to our application that invoice you can see here. This is the application and this I'm just click on the more details button to see the details view. Yeah, so after click on the details button, you can see so this in the right hand side, uh, this is the invoice PDF copy just I have sent. So for your information, just I'm opening this copy. So this is copy I have sent. So this is my PDF copy. And I have sent to the email as a supplier. So this is the PDF copy and this PDF copy uh, we received uh, in our application. So the right hand side view is a PDF copy and in a left hand side, you could see uh, the extracted data from the invoices. So in extraction, you can see the vendor name is extracted, uh, tax ID extracted, tax ID means our GST number, vendor name. Uh, so here you can see the invoice reference as well. So all this data has been extracted by our application automatically. And also here you can see, uh, this is the PO number. So PO number is mandatory uh, to do the two way and three way matching. So this PO number also extracted from the invoice. So here you can see this is the PO number and this extracted PO number will automatically comes here. Also, if you can see this is the uh, reference, invoice reference, uh, invoice number, that invoice number will be visible in the left hand side. Okay. So these are the header information. If I scroll down, so here you can see the line item informations. So in a line item information here in the right hand side, you can see these are the three line items supplier have sent in an invoice and uh, these are the line item extracted by our application okay these are the extracted line item so if you uh, see the line item details so here we have a serial number uh, the material code so if i scroll it down to the right so here you can see the material number same material number extracted from the invoices material descriptions if there will have any HSN code, then that HSN code also, it will be extracted automatically. Unit of measure will be extracted. Uh, then quantity, how much quantity uh, has been delivered, that quantity will extract it. So here you can see the uh, GR open quantity as well. So GR open quantity, it will comes from the backend. And here you can see the PO, num PO line item number. So if in case our application failed to determine the PO line item, so we have provide uh, some functionality, uh, we, uh, then account payable clerk or buyer can click on that uh, button and it will show the line items which is available under this PO. So these are the PO line items. And if our application failed to identify the line item, then a user just has to select this line item and click on save button. Then it, it will automatically detect the line item and process for the further validations. So after these validations, uh, after this extraction, our system will validate through the different different business rules. So right now our system is validate this information. Uh, so if I want to see the list of validations, I click on the view validations button. Yes. So here you can see the list of validations. So first validations will be the vendor name match. So in a vendor name match, uh, our system is identifying the uh, vendor name, uh, uh, extract the vendor name and try to match same vendor name, which is available in a, our backend ERP system. Then again, in a vendor matching, our application uh, check the tax number as well, uh, like the GST number. If the vendor have mentioned the GST number on the tax invoices, then our application extract that GST number and try to match that GST number, which is available in our database. So if our uh, system is uh, fail to extract, uh, fail to validate this information, then that stage, uh, status will show as a fail. But right now our system validate all the informations, uh, then it will show the status success. Then here you can see the duplication. So again, our system have checked all the uh, duplication check and it is uh, successfully validated that the invoice number is not duplicated. Uh, then we have another validation, which is PO, uh, PO match. So our system will check the PO which belongs to that vendors or not. So for that, uh, our system, it will automatically check uh, with the PO, uh, PO data available in our system. Okay. So that also successfully done. 
so here we have a description match so description match means line item determination our system will automatically determine the line items available in the purchase orders uh, then next important validation is a po price match so here our application check the po uh, po price and the price mentioned on the invoice so right now the po price and invoice price uh, is matching that's why the application is uh, showing success the next validation is a, a gr match so gr match belongs to the confirmations whether you received the goods or services so in case uh, if you are not received the goods or services and supplier sent uh, the invoice uh, for the posting or for the validations so in that case our system will automatically trigger the workflow and in that workflow our system will assign the work item to the store user for the confirmation of the services then store user will confirm the services uh, he post the good receipt or service entry sheet and then it will then that validation will automatically get success and the last one is showing the status that invoices is posted in a sap or not so this status also success so right now our uh, application successfully validated all the information and this invoice will automatically get posted in a back end erp system so if i open the back end erp system i will show you how it will look like so just i'm sharing my sap screen <clears throat> so i'm just checking the po number which is mentioned on the invoice Yes. So this is the PO number. Just I have entered. So this is the PO number uh, which supplier have mentioned on the invoice. If you just I'm flipping my screen. Yes. So here you can see. Uh, so this is the invoice number. Uh, this is the purchase order number. Supplier have mentioned uh, on their invoices. and i just opened same po in a back end erp system which is our sap and then our application validate all the informations price uh, then unit of measures and all mandatory information duplication checks and it will automatically post that invoice into the sap if i click on the purchase order history yeah so here you can see the invoice has been posted by the application automatically so if i click on that so here you can see this is our posted invoices in a sap without manual intervention it will automatically post the invoice it will automatically detect the tax code what tax code is required for the posting so all required informations our application gathered from that invoice the invoice pdf copy to validate those informations after validations if we needed some approval from our top management it will also trigger the work workflow as well in case of exception uh, if po price is not matching gr quantity is missing it also raise the exception for that trigger the workflow assign the work items so like that our system will work and it will automatically post the invoice in a back end erp system so what happened when uh, our uh, the price uh, price of the invoice and uh, po price is not matching so i will show you the inbox uh, in which uh, this uh, let me flip my screen i think while nitin you are showing your screen maybe just to jump in there and add a couple of points i think the the key key part here from the business process perspective is to how do we drive zero touch invoice processing like if if we have people entering the invoice and then ultimate end up into erp system as process, posting the invoice idea is to uh, run through every invoice to scan and extract it automatically run through all the checks that it needs to go through automatically and get posted in a, in a sap automatically so if a if a uh, i i call it as a happy path scenario if a invoice comes in which is matching to the po exactly which is matching to the receipts exactly and have all the other checks like duplicate checks and everything matched then there is no need for any human to touch that invoice and that's the idea so from where we are uh, in in the in, in the current stage to how do we completely automate um, 
the in the invoice processing uh, sort of area um, is 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 ultimately the objective. And and we will be able to monitor with, with the dashboard that we are giving. We will be able to monitor uh, how many suppliers are sending the invoices, which are automatically getting posted. How many suppliers? What suppliers? What services? What group of services or products that we receive does not go through automatic channel and does not go through Happy Path? And we can then provide a feedback to the supplier or our buyer team to to set up the PO in certain way that we can reduce the invoice processing time, etc. So there is a lot of information which is being gap captured in the back of this process, which can be uh, monitored as a da management dashboard and then can be used to improvise the process further. So just wanted to touch, touch upon that uh, a quick part. Sorry, sorry, Nathan. Yeah, thank you. Amit. So yes, so what happened if our application failed to validate the rate because uh, the rate mentioned on the invoice, uh, which is not matching with the purchase order rate. So our application uh, assign the work item to the buyer. So how uh, it will assign and how it will look like, I will just show you. So already at the time uh, of the date, uh, how we are receiving the invoices through the uh, three different uh, channels, uh, that time we have explained, we have a third way also to upload, so a supplier can upload their invoices through the sales service portal. So we have our sales service portal. So in that sales service portal, uh, we have added one inbox. If our applications fail to match the rate, then our invoice management application assign the work item to the buyer to check the rates of that invoices, which is mentioned. Okay. So right now I'm just jumping into the inbox. So here you can see like uh, an email inbox. We can see the inbox here. We have received the work item in which some information is not matching with the, uh, the invoice which is which we received okay so right now just i'm clicking on that uh, uh, work item here right hand side we can see the accept and reject and forward button so if uh, so uh, what is the wrong information if i want to see as a buyer here uh, we have given one link if i click on that link it will automatically open the detail view so buyer can see uh, what are the exceptions there what are the validations issues are there so as a buyer right now i have uh, received one uh, work item in my inbox and using that inbox functionality i just click on the uh, click on that link it will open uh, the detail view of the invoice and here just i will see uh, the view validations okay so like that uh, we are receiving the uh, work item uh, from the invoice management applications and here offline this uh, supplier uh, or vendor will take uh, sorry uh, the buyer will take the offline decision if po uh, rate is not matching it with the invoice uh, then buyer will have uh, two options either buyer will change the purchase order rate uh, in a back end erp system and again sync this purchase order to uh, our invoice management application then our invoice management application will uh, validate that rate uh, with the rate mentioned on the invoices and second options buyer will have buyer can reject the invoice so here bottom in the bottom page we can see one reject button so if buyer is not satisfied with the information uh, which is supplied by the suppliers or mentioned by the supplier on the invoice which is wrong so in that case uh, buyer can reject that invoice so on rejection our application will trigger the email uh, to the buyer to the supplier and inform that these are the informations which is incorrect you have to uh, modify this information and resend uh, this uh, invoice to us so like that uh, the invoice management application will work yeah so this is all about uh, our application so i will hand over to uh, priyanka for the further step uh, so amit uh, are you want to add something uh, in that process flow yeah, I mean, I just wanted to touch upon the dashboard. Maybe if we could uh, jump onto dashboard again, uh, just to give you give our yeah. participants a, a quick view about the dashboard. Right. So just to touch upon uh, this feature, so uh, accounts payable person or manager, I mean, depending on the role or finance manager, uh, could have uh this uh dashboard handy for them so this is this is an application which sits alongside with sap can be accessed from sap um 
you it can have a single sign on for the user internal user when whatever the uh, user id they are using for 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 sap access they can jump from sap to this lap uh, this this dashboard and on this dashboard uh, nitin if you could point out if we have uh, various different um, information with a with a period so if you see the right hand the top corner we have a period that the user can select and monitor so for example manager can see uh, the invoice this dashboard based on on a monthly basis um, the the accounts payable clerk uh, can can see this on daily basis so idea is to give them an easy way to uh, monitor their workload for example if i am a accounts payable clerk i should be able to see oh how many how many invoices i have received which has failed to extract so the, the failure to extract is essentially you know caused by multiple i see some questions in the chat as well why what is the accuracy of ocr um accuracy of ocr is Hello. I think Amit uh, got disconnected uh, for some reason. He is trying yeah. to join oh, yeah. back. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. We can uh, run uh, another poll before uh, he joins. Apologies. Yeah, definitely. We can. Yes. So we'll have a quick poll. Meanwhile, Amit joins again. Yeah, the poll question is on your screen. What challenges are you facing in the purchase invoicing process? This is a multiple choice question. You can make more than one choices. Please make your choices. Thank you. Yeah, so we have Amit here. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing your concerns over the chat box as well. Over to you, Amit. Yeah, my apologies. I, I think I, I lost my connection for a, for a few seconds. Uh, but yeah, I think what I was trying, uh, saying was uh, the dashboard allows day-to-day uh, uh, processing invoices for day-to-day -day users. I should be able to see how many invoices are, are are failed for any reason, whether it's a handwritten invoice or bad quality PDF. The if uh, application does not get enough information automatically through the scans, it will put that invoice into the bucket of failed to capture. And then uh, idea is me as a accounts payable team must person to monitor failed capture on daily basis and with a single click of a button i can populate the the field um and, and essentially this information uh idea is on day one you might get 40 or 60 percent 50 percent uh failures uh for for um uh, for the invoices which are not clear potentially but the the, the idea is to continuously improvise uh the moment we see a certain supplier has certain uh, anomaly in his in his, his or her invoice that can be then configured trained and then that supplier from next invoice onwards can be automated so we will when we deploy this we will automate your strategic suppliers so your form will train the system if it is not trained or it is not captured automatically most standard invoices uh, our invoice will automatically 100 percent scan it for the or extract data for all the all the necessary information in scenario where your strategic suppliers are not getting uh, captured, those we as a part of deployment, we will configure it. So all your 80% of volume on day one could go through automation. For the remainder of the 20%, which could be for uh, your 80% tail of suppliers, um, that is a continuous improvement process. And, and that's how we will also train your system admin or we provide your support and, and get it done. But idea was there is a dashboard, and we are continuously building, uh, bringing new improvements to this dashboard, um, so that the the day to day operations of a, a user on the ground is is more easy. They get better experience on this, 
And also at the same time, the management layer would be able to monitor the KPIs that we saw in, in the beginning. So just to give you a glimpse of what dashboards we have, uh, maybe Nitin, you can share your screen quickly um, uh, or, or show the dashboard that uh, we have. That that would be the reporting dashboard. That, that would be a, a good uh, part. So, so that in nutshell is, is where we are. Uh, I think we can probably take some questions now while Nitin is trying to uh, get that dashboard. Um, maybe I think we have answered a few questions on the way, but uh, there are there is a question. Um, yeah, I think there is uh, from Bikashji. I think your question is there is some information which AP person has to enter. How are you finding GL account from invoice? Yes. So uh, the information that uh, the accounts payable person has uh, in this, this is a non-purchase order scenario. When you are receiving an invoice and there is no purchase order, because if the purchase order is there, it generally picks up from the purchase order line item. But in, in the case of invoice, when it's received without uh, a purchase order, our, there are two steps, the two solutions that we have. One is based on the description of the invoice, we, we can identify the, the system identifies what is the closing uh, closed metal uh, ID it has or metal group it, it belongs to. And based on the metal group, it has a mapping table which proposes a GL account. So we have a ML uh, machine learning capability on the product which identifies the description of the invoice item in non PO scenario. Then it uh, identifies the metal group, potential metal group or service group, and then it identifies GL and it proposes the GL. And if it is not sure about what it is, then it will highlight the, the field that we are not able to find out the GL for this. Again, when the user manually puts in the GL account, it makes the note of it and it gets trained. So over a period, if the invoices kind of comes in, the accuracy and proposition gets very, very accurate. Um, some aging report yes of course that's the whole idea the aging the timeline the time processing uh, we have the built in reports uh, technologically speaking uh, we have the reporting built through uh, power bi so all the information that we've captured uh, as a as a back of this process being e executed there is a power bi dashboards and reports which uh, which is enable to uh, which which includes the aging report to give you on but much much more than aging report as well um Yes, we can uh, connect to other ERPs. I am not uh, very 100% uh, uh, sure about uh, ABS, ABS, ERP, energy, but um, uh, we, we could connect as long as, so from our product perspective, our product uh, um, supports file-based integration and web services-based integration. Um, if uh, ABS uh, ERP has the integration framework available, we can we can do that the in terms of integration wise what we need we need our application to run it needs master data to be in sync like a vendor master for example purchase orders getting created that that needs to be uh, synced um and also we need to um, have the invoice then posted so we we have we'll give you the api specs for the api we need and those specs can be um uh, if, if if your product can support those specs then of course we can enable it and these are the, some of the, the dashboards that we have uh, that will come along with uh, uh, with, with with the product um, number of invoices processed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I mean, we'll share this pack with you, and then we can. We are unfortunately we are three minutes over, but I'm I'm still happy to take uh, questions if there are any further questions. Okay. I think one question, what are the security measures uh, that we've taken in place? I think if go back to the slide. I think we will leave. Yes, it's a, it's a good question. Thanks, Kaushik. Uh, in terms of security, we take security very, very seriously. Our application has gone through vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. Um, uh, our product uh, comes up with... Uh, as a front end and uh, uh, Spring Boot, uh, Spring Java, uh, Spring Boot Java and .NET services as a backend microservice architecture. 
we have uh, gone through multiple uh, checks and and um, uh, testing as i said we have done the vulnerability testing and penetration testing for our product it is we have the test results uh, ready for sharing with you all our integration whether it is front end ui for external suppliers or internal users or um uh or, or back-end integration like in with any erp or sap it is all encrypted um we have roles and authorization based framework here so everything every access that we provide is is enabled through uh roles and authorization and we can when we deploy this product just very similar to sap that every user will get a specific role every role will have specific object every object will have specific org element for example if you have multiple companies and you want certain members to only see the invoices of certain company code or plant for that matter we have orgs in it as well so we have a authorization and authentication control uh, as i said earlier we could integrate with azure ad integration or we could have a, a local ad as well um, so security wise uh, we we take things very very seriously and nowadays we have to but we have all the industry standard security measures in place already uh in the back end database we have a sql database but we can work with any other databases as well so we are quite flexible for that in terms of deployment we generally uh, offer this as on premise solution but we can also offer if you're interested as a saas based offering as well then i have one more question uh, uh is the uniformity of the invoice layout is required in order to capture the different data from invoice um no is the answer uh, obviously the ai model that extract the invoice data it it is trained on thousands and millions of invoices so it it is very um dynamic in the way that if you provide uh, an invoice uh, generally speaking just take a step back if generally speaking a supplier a particular vendor submitting the invoice to you generally the big supplier medium to big supplier i'm talking about would have the invoice generated from their erp system so they always will have a similar or same uh, format um so what we do is uh, we feed the invoice as it is first to the ai model ai model then identifies it tries to match all the uh, all the fields that we need from the invoice and if it if it identifies a certain required field it is not able to find in the invoice pdf it then highlights it and and that's that's when we uh, configure that field suggest that for this particular supplier for this particular format this is the field and then that that is added into training so it keeps that information and it tries to then if another supplier comes with the similar information it will try to kind of do it automatically it's a, it's a continuous learning and improvement process uh, however once it's trained for a particular supplier it will always try to um, give that okay, remember that uh, mapping and you will not have to then train it for one, once it's done so uh, yeah yes ai feature is built in in our application uh, we we use our uh, azure ai services uh, but we uh, we have also our own ai model in place the combination of both will gives us sort of a complete package uh, to allow the invoices to be um, automatically extracted as i said um i'll have to uh, give a give a uh, sort of a uh, caution here saying that our our idea is not to 100% automate on day one we have to find out our strategic suppliers as i said our 80% volume typically comes from 20 or 30% of suppliers and then we have 80 to 70% of suppliers by volume which which has which is a long list of suppliers which will only provide 20% of invoice volume so our focus on day one is for this product implementation is that 20 to 30% of suppliers and their volume so if you let's say have 1000 suppliers so those 200 suppliers 300 suppliers that we will take their formats first when we deploy we'll ensure that 100% of those invoices are automatically extracted uh, and reduce the manual intervention into those so on day one, one if you look at the overall volume of the invoice processing you will have data extraction handled automatically by 80% and then you move into the next phase which is the the validation phase and that uh, another analysis for that so for example which of these uh, suppliers are having issues with the po the way pos are set up are having issues when the the way they, they are sending the uh, the good receipts 
uh, and then we handle and improvise those business processes as well. So we have a lot of different phases of inverse processing and and the continuous improvisation of those phases uh, with different different uh, mitigation plans basically. I hope I answered your question, but more than happy to have comments. Uh, I'm sure uh, we are kind of uh, short on time today, but. Uh, Please get in touch with us. Uh, just drop us an email, and we'll we'll arrange a call, and we'll have one-to-one -one sessions with you, and answer your questions in further more details, and give you a more detailed in-depth demo as well. Um, finally, I think uh, if we go to the last slide, uh, I would just like to thank all of you, um, uh, and then making this session a bit more interactive. Um, and as I said, I would love to uh, you know answer any questions one-on-one -on -one that you may have um and and take it from there but thank you so much for your for your time uh our, our contact details are 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 mentioned here and we'll also uh send out the slide pack for your information where our contact details will be there uh we'll encourage you to please get in touch with us uh and and see how we can help your organization to optimize and streamline your business processes in this space thank you Thank you, Amit. Thank you, all the attendees. So it's high time we should wind up. Uh, Grief gratitudes to everyone, all attendees and the speakers. Thank you so much for joining. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.